done well. Um, just people hear me okay. A, bit, a yes would again would be just be great. Make sure I'm I'm connected. Anybody? Yes. Putting yes. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting practiced at this with my students. <laughs> okay. Well, I won't reintroduce myself because Manuel has done a lovely job. Thank you for those compliments, Manuel. Um, you're very, very kind. Um, but I am working, as, as, as he says, currently in UCD teaching and learning, which, um, and I did actually work for two years in the National Forum. So I've, I've done a lot in, in assessment over the last couple of years. So I'll, I'll get straight into to my, to my slides. Just a little bit about our context. I'm very conscious, I'm telling you, about our context. I'm, I kind of feel we're maybe about... A week or two ahead of you, we're, we're really all struggling yes. with this together. So, um, like University College Dublin is not an online university. It's a very large uh, Dublin-based institution with 33,000 students. It's been established, you know, since 1854. Yeah. Um, and it's a research-intensive university. So it's, it's, it's struggling, a bit like yourselves, with going online. Um, and what I'm sharing with you is what we have learned um, in the last few weeks around alternative assessments. We've been doing alternative assessments for a long time, but this is alternative assessments in a particular context, in the COVID-19 context. So this is what, what we want to focus on. Um, and this was put together by ourselves, Teaching and Learning, which I work in. So I'm not an IT person. I'm in the teaching and learning side with some IT skills. We've also got a separate IT service department and we've got an assessment unit that runs the logistics of, of the assessment. And, and I'll also link with some of the, the forum resources in this. So that's our context. And I just want to go, the, the, I suppose the aim of the session is to give a short overview of what we've done, particularly some of the design principles, just a way of thinking about your assessments because you're all so different, all your different schools. I know you have about 12 schools. Uh, we have about, I think, 22 schools or something. So you've all got different disciplines. And so I want to give some overarching way of thinking about this, um, particularly in, obviously, the COVID-19 context. Um, and I want to go through some examples, but I want also to see what your ideas are, because um, you've already, I'm sure, started to think about that. So we share some of ours and what you're thinking about. So um, come back to that. I will, in the second half, get into students' academic integrity. Um, that's the whole, the idea that a lot of people are worried about, you know, students' honesty in the online context, plagiarism, cheating, all, all these kind of behaviours quite, sound quite negative, but also um, students' academic integrity, I suppose, the positive side of it. And I'll highlight some key resources. So that, that's what I aim to do. So the academic integrity bit will be towards the second half. Um, so we might just keep keep focus. But as we go along, could you in the chat start to push what are the challenges you're most worried about, um, both for your students and, and yourself? So, um, and also if you're a student, if we've got some students here in the, in the classroom, <laughs> uh, could you also put them up? Because I think it'd also be useful for, for Manuel and his team to kind of see some of the challenges that you're worried about. We might can sort them all out here, but we might even start to look at them. So start to put them up into the chat as, as I speak um, and put them into Portuguese if you, if, if you prefer or English, I don't mind because they, they'll be picked up um, by, uh, by Manuel or, or others afterwards. So start putting in the challenges there into, into the chat as we go along. And I'll stop. Um, academic dishonesty, okay, is coming up. Oral assessment, I'll, I'll talk to that. And I'll talk to academic dishonesty. How to carry out reliable assessments, that's coming up in the chat. Uh, wariness of the system, easy escape, reliability. Okay, so a lot around reliability and academic integrity. Okay, connection problems, yeah, common common, very similar issues, just looking quickly what UCD has as well, very similar. So to give you a bit about our context, because it might be like yours, we do have a heavy exam kind of feel like this. This room here is like one of our, one of our rooms for exams at the end of the year. And obviously COVID-19 is not allowing this. And about 60% of our assessments are exams. We do have about 40% continuous. But how do we actually cope with all these ones in particular that were in this exam hall context? And, I, and I'm sure you are similar in, in, in that extent. So, um, so we worked out a way of thinking about this. Um, and if you follow me through just the way of thinking, and then hopefully you can start applying this to your different contexts. Um, the first thing is when you're looking at 
what can I now do um, instead of what was there before that might have been invigilated or, or assess, assignments that were, were there before, your first port of call is your learning outcomes. What were the outcomes of the module and the assessment to start? Was it discussing? Was it describing? Was it evaluating? So what were your learning outcomes? It doesn't matter in some ways, it's a different method. You're trying to achieve the same outcome. So that's your first port of call and thinking, what were you trying to do in that assignment or in that exam? Secondly, um, you need to think about the, the time to upskill um, and keeping it simple. This is not a time to be very, very innovative. Um, there are other times to be innovative. Students are going to be stressed, staff are going to be stressed. You really need to keep it simple. You really need to look at things that students, and, and it leads on to a little bit the next point, is that you need to keep it familiar. So I would really strongly recommend, or at least we have been strongly recommending that staff try and pick alternatives or exam formats, whatever, that are very like or very similar to what you're already using. Um, the other thing in the blue box here in the middle is it needs to align with the learning experience. Before you might have been teaching in classrooms, you were able to chat your students informally, they saw you, they saw you, in, you know, you were able to call into you. That's not going to be happening now so easily. So you need in your, it's going to be unfamiliar, online is very unfamiliar to a lot of students. Um, so you need, when you're judging your assessments, to be conscious that these are not, they're not learning in the same environment they were learning before. So your standards and how you assess them will be, you need to take that into account. It needs to align with kind of your teaching approaches. The next ones, which are the orange ones here, are all to do with fairness. Um, and some, of, some of you have mentioned reliability. Um, just looking here at some of the comments, large classes, large student community. Uh, you do want to be fair and equitable. Um, there are a few parts to this. You don't want the first one here on the bottom left, student effort hours. Your new assessment or the assessment that you're now doing should be equitable or time-wise to what it originally was. I'm not talking about the length of the time of the exam. I'm talking about the student effort hours, the time that the students might put into it. So you have to be very careful not to overload students when you're, you're planning your, your, your new assignments. Be careful of overload. You need to be sure, and this might have been particularly for UCD, but in our case, a lot of students had done something already. Um, so you, we suggested, and again, this may differ, so jump in if this does differ in your institution in the chat room. Um, we were saying that if students had already done 20% of their work already, um, that the 80% in their exams needs to stay the same. So in other words, we need to keep the weighting the same. They can't just get now 100% for the bit they've already done. But that might be down to your own institutional call on that, but certainly we, we called on that one. The other thing about equity is not all students are, are equal in their learning. Um, so you may, may have students with disabilities, you may have students who have already got accommodation, and you also have to take these into account whether it's more time or whether it's more, you know, maybe even another alternative to, to make sure that you get those students. So the next is once you've kind of chosen, I suppose, I mean, I know it may, in your case, it may be a lot of exams, but replacing exams, but once you've cho chosen what it's going to be, a key part of this then is communication, the transparency to the students. So, um, so first of all, they really need to know um, what the, um, technical kind of things, for example, the number of attempts that maybe that the exam might have or the assignment might have, can they, can they submit it three times or there only once, the file formats, these are things you may not have had to think of before. Um, the detail, they will need a lot more detail in relation to the online piece, um, you know, the number of questions, the choice, you know, so um, more detail, what happens, the other thing is what happens if my internet fails, what happens if, you know, I can't log in, these kind of, you know, those kind of details are really, really important. Um, and you may need to even think about these at a school level um, and actually kind of share, share kind of opportunities and, and um, uh, but the detail is really important. The next thing is the clarity of the standards. 
if you have been using rubrics or assessment criteria for your for your assessments you really need to make sure that these are maybe are they do these need adjusting do you need to create some uh, so the students are very clear on the standards that are, are required And finally, just to go through um, two last kind of things to think about in your design. The middle one here, the orange one, is about the security. There's one thing teaching online and using all sorts of different software and different packages for teaching. But assessment is a little bit different because for assessment, I'm sure, like ourselves, that you need it to be very secure. You need to maybe get at it later for external examiners. Um, so you need to be really, really careful. Whatever you choose um, actually has that functionality that it can be stored and secured. And then the green um, on the left here is around academic integrity. And I'll go through this kind of um, in the second half of, of the, this talk. But there's three key aspects to this. There's prevention, stopping it happening. A detection, which is more like plagiarism software than that, and education, that the students know what it's all about. So I'll come back to those. So these are kind of, kind of key design principles that a way of thinking about sort of what is it we're trying to do and a way of thinking. Just, is there any questions so far? Just put them into the chat and I'll have a, have a little look. You seem very cautious about oral assessments. Yes, and I think one of the reasons, so Sophia, thank you for that for that question, is about trying to do it reliably for students and trying to. Um, I mean, a lot of people are doing it, but just do it carefully uh, because maybe you're not as familiar with it. Students aren't familiar with it, so it's really. would be an alternative the case of internet fails for the students do you tell students that if the internet fails you take a screenshot that you who do you contact is it the module coordinator is it IT services um, do they um, do they have an alternative to send it in you, you need to think of plan B and, and it can be different plan B's but I I think you need to be sure, clear to the students what plan B is. Um, and that can be different things. Um, it can be that they hand it in later. It can be that they get straight on to technical who might be able to sort it for them. So have a plan B if the internet fails. So the broad type of assessments, um, and I'm using the word alternative because this is in replace of that exam hall context. And these are different ways. That's just the language. Um, so, Sophie, our orders are already common at law. Well, then you're okay, Sophie, my comment to the students and the novelty is the IT mediation. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, in your case, the probably students are very used to it. You'll probably be less worried about that in that case. I suppose that there's three types. The language around this is confusing, even within an institution. Um, and I just want to go broadly three of the different types of approaches based on their properties. You can call these different things, but these are the three broad approaches. The one on the left, centrally scheduled exams, um, it may be the only one you're allowed to, I don't know, but it, it's the one where it's probably the same as the original paper. It's timed, short time. Um, and because of that, it might be a limited time. So I don't want to put an exact figure on this, but it might be two to four hours. It's that kind of time, sort of like the original exam. It usually doesn't allow materials access to it. It might be small kind of things that they can bring in, but it's usually not allowed. Often factual or, or knowledge-based exams. And because it's in the exam system or timetable, in our case, and again, this might be your case, it may need to be scheduled by the institution. Um, because students now, again, the context might be different, but we have, you know, four or five modules going on in parallel. So an exam really, need, in this case, needs to be scheduled by the institution. The next kind of slightly lighter version, for want of a better word on this, is the exam that still looks maybe a bit like the original exam paper, but maybe students are allowed to take it away or take it home or have a bit more time. 
Um, and this kind of category is that the students may have a half day to two weeks. Again, it's, it's only rough guidance. Um, they're often more application discussion types exams because they allow students more time to think. Um, and in this case, this middle category, you may well allow students to access whatever they want to access, allow them access the internet, the resources, the materials, but they must acknowledge the sources. So it still might be look very much like the original exam. People call it sometimes open book, take away. There's different language around it, but I wouldn't worry you can call it what you want to call it. Uh, but it is in this middle category uh, that they, you are saying to the students, read what you want, access what you like, acknowledge that, reference it, but give it back to us. And depending how much you have or how, want, how long you want to do it, it can be a day, half day, it can be um, two weeks, but it's not scheduled in the university exam system. It's, a, it's something they take away. Um, alternative two usually results in more difficult exam that would be harder and thus more negative grades, doesn't it? Um, Equipa, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, it doesn't necessarily because you, what you would do is you would look at your, your criteria. Um, you should judge it. Um, it, it doesn't have to be, you should judge it against your, your criteria. Look, look at your, I don't know if you have rubrics, but if you don't, maybe just create a, some sort of scoring sheet. It, it doesn't have to be harder. Um, it, you, you can mark it that you, you want to be fair, you want to be equitable, to go back to that principle, to the original kind of context. So, you know, it, it shouldn't be harder. Um, if you feel it's harder, you should mark it as, as you would. Um, if you feel it, it might be harder, then you should adjust for that, uh, is what I would say. Um, for project manager, that, which does not rely on a final 20%, 100% for project, that does not rely on it. Uh, Philomena, not quite sure what you're asking there. Um, is that, yeah, I might come back to you, Philomena, just maybe, uh, I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. I'll come back to that. Um, the last one here, even lighter again, version of this, is um, an assignment is the word we, we would choose, but it's not the original exam paper, but it might have been, it might be, it might have been an exam, but you're very different format um, and it's looking very different, very, very different method. You, the students may have as long as possible and like the middle category, the, it's often application discussion based and the materials are allowed and you must acknowledge the source. So I would think, try and think which category you're in. Doesn't matter what you call it, you might as an institution or might decide to call them something uh, just for clarity, but they have different properties and the students need to be clear therefore about what they're allowed and not allowed access because of it. So just to go to the assignment one a little bit more, um, the assignment ones are things that may have been done um, in your continuous assessments during the term or indeed might have been done at the end um, and they therefore, you know, they're not your classic paper. And these are some of the ones that we have had and some of the ones that, some of the alternatives that we suggest. Love to hear from you again in the chat if you're doing anything or thinking of anything in this space. Um, Teresa, I've chosen three individual essays with guides. Great, yeah, brilliant. Were, Teresa, were they used to essays? I'd be curious to know. Is it something they're familiar with? Um, and if they were, that would be great. Um, maybe you come back on that, Teresa, because, yep, that sounds good. Three individual essays, particularly if students are familiar with them. Um, assignments can be, as, as you probably have many essays, reports, problem sheets, bibliographies, abstracts. Uh, they're very wide. Um, kind of range of assessments. Um, the mm. one thing you do need to be careful of is their academic integrity. Um, yes, yeah. Yes, they are useful. Great. Thanks. Thanks for that, Teresa. Um, the oral is an interesting one. And obviously some of you, somebody there, Sophia in, in law was using an oral. <clears throat> in replace of orals, a couple of things that we have suggested, again, this is an UCD is that we use Google Hangouts. Do you use Google? You're using Google a lot? No, look at Manuel, chickens, okay. Um, it doesn't matter, if, but what you are using, and maybe some of the techie people would chip in here, maybe there's some, some alternatives, but we've used Google, so Google Hangout Meets is something that we have suggested. And Blackboard Collaborate, which you probably do have as a virtual classroom. Thank you, Manuel, Blackboard Collaboration Zoom, perfect. One of the things you need to be careful of here um, is do you need to record it? 
um, and um, we certainly in Blackboard Collaborate can record um, and in Zoom you can record um, and that is really again for assessment storage and archiving um, so just that is something that we care careful about. We didn't allow Blackboard Collaborate during the teaching time because of just a, a kind of a heavy draw on it but that's just a UCD. Engineering students will be terrified of oral exams. Maybe this for Francisco, another alternative for Francisco is um, them doing podcasts or something separately on, in their own at home and then sending it's less, it's less terrifying. So they, they might do something like that. So, you know, um, a podcast video at home. So they're not doing it in front of somebody, but they can, they can submit it. That's, uh, that would help with that terrifying feel. Um, if you're doing in-class tests, you might consider online quizzes uh, or tests, as I think they're called in, in Blackboard. Recording, that is a question, interesting question, recording and, and, and uh, yes, we had that question in UCD, should you ask, should you get students permission for recording? We checked this with our um, assessment unit and once the students know it's being recorded, for assessment purposes, it, it's covered by the institutional um, agreement around, um, you know, um, what do you call it? Or GPD as you have it there, yes. Yeah, so it, it was allowed. And I, I'd say you were the same. There's probably an overarching um, thing that students sign when they come in that that, that material is used for assessment is, is, is fine. So once they know it's been recorded, it, that is fine. But they need to know it's been recorded. Yeah, that came up. What's the problem Blackboard Collaborate? The problem, Anna, was just a, a technical um, system being overloaded. There was a worry technically that if a lot of staff were using Blackboard Collaborate during the semester, that actually they wouldn't be um, the, the wave band, I'm sure I'm not calling this the right thing, but basically it would overload and that the students, there'd be too many people using it. That was the only reason. Otherwise, it's fine. Um, but what, so what we said was that they could use it in the assessment period, but not maybe during the teaching term. But you might be fine with that. That was the problem. Um, in-class presentations. Um, if you had in-class presentations, again, you might consider a video assignment or an audio task or a poster instead of a presentation, in-class presentation. Uh, pa even PowerPoint um, that students could record over and, and submit. One thing I have found out though, actually with PowerPoint, we, we live and learn on these things, is that actually some of the file sizes in PowerPoint if you do audio is very large. Um, so that um, is something just to watch out for. And also we use Brightspace and some of the video assignments that you submit are actually can be very large. So I think Brightspace only allowed five minutes and now I think they've upped it to 15. So you might again check that with Blackboard. Is there a size limit on your videos in Blackboard? And maybe somebody might again come back on that and just tell people if, if there's a problem with that. In, in re relation to group work, if you have been doing group work, there is, there's the option in, in Blackboard as there is another VLEs, online group discussions, and there is the group assignment functionality that can be done. It's just not face-to-face -face groups. Thank you for <laughs> giving me the full general data protection regulation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, you're doing superb. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. <laughs> um, so, um, laboratory work. Yes, laboratory work is an interesting one. Obviously, if people can do lab reports, that's fine. We've had a big debate about this in UCD. What about practical skills? Is If they can't simulate it and they can't do it, what do you do? Well, there's been quite a lot of talk about maybe even deferral. If you're in year two or year three, could the lab physical practical work be deferred till another time? And they just do the more theoretical aspect of it for this semester. And that might be something that you might think about and again, come back. Um, Fernando, I have a class where a relevant assessment part is to solve problems. Oral doesn't work. Written tasks have the risk of fraud. Do you have any suggestions? Um, I Again, it may well be that um, you have to do the time constrained exams. There was a nice software, I think it was a cam scanner, that was quite good on problem solving kind of where you could do problems and scan them and put them up. Have a look at cam scanner. Again, I'm not 
the most technical, but that might be something, Fernando, that you might think of in relating to solve, solving problems. So the students can scan, and it was a free software, a cam scanner. I'll, I'll come back on that one, actually, if, it, if, I'm, if I'm wrong on that. Um, so try that one out. And others may have ideas about that. The evaluation for the lab work. Yeah, that's what they're thinking of for some of the physical stuff, uh, Marie, Maria. Yeah, yeah. Um, recording is essential to ensure fairness. Yeah, well, the recording, recording, if students are recording, if it's an assessment and they're handing it as an assessment, then it does need to be, rec we would need it recorded because somebody else might have to check it. So that, that's why if it's, again, you can come back on that, but that's why if it's recording for, if it's for assessment and you have to archive your assessments, then for fairness, they do, they do need to be so that somebody can check them or do a moderation of them. Um, I think Banwell is nodding there a little bit that maybe that I'm, I'm sure your institution probably has that you need to archive and be available to, to others. Um, in class debate, um, if you had debates, maybe a critical essay or an online discussion might replace that. And if you had in class participation, um, maybe something like their class progress in Blackboard using the learning analytics aspect in Blackboard might replace that. Um, online discussion, maybe just the contribution only if you had kind of in-class participation type grades, you may or may not, or the reflective learning journal tool in, in Brightspace. Um, so they, there's, some, there's, there's some alternatives for uh, um, different types of assessment. I wanted to spend just a few minutes around formative assessment. I know we're really talking here very much so about summative, the graded assessment. Um, but there is also what we would call a formative assessment, which is in essence feedback to students. Um, this, I'm just sharing you with the National Forum put together a lovely resource that I was involved in when I was there. Uh, that's why I call it lovely. <laughs> uh, part of my work. Um, but formative assessment, just to say there's two parts to it. The purple here on the right is where staff are giving feedback to students on their assessment. And the blue on the left is basically assessment as learning, means opportunities that the students can monitor how well they are doing themselves. So like self and peer. Um, and feedback includes both of those. So when you're thinking, well, how do I do this aspect in this context? I just thought I'd share, this is UCD's um, feedback approaches. We have six different approaches. And it, they're, they're built off the National Forum's um, definition on the left there. But at the top, which is the purple, not quite the same purple, uh, but this is the purple on the top there, on, on the top right, they are staff giving feedback to students. So it literally is from individual feedback to group feedback in the class to maybe students doing a draft or something and you give them feedback. You can still do any of those in the current context. Uh, they might be harder to do in your large classes. Um, so you may decide, you know, something the best I can do is group feedback to the class in the context that will, in UCD, that would be okay because it's one of our feedback approaches. But also you can use lots of opportunity in the bottom half here for feedback. And these are legitimately, um, in UCD, these are legitimate feedback approaches. So you can do online automated feedback if you use MCQs. But the other thing is, um, you may find that in, in things like Zoom and your virtual classrooms, you can use the polling, you know, the polling functionality that you have here. Um, you can use those kind of things to get students to do little quizzes and they can see if they're getting the material or not and that's a really nice feedback that's simple and if you've got large classes I could do this here now if I, if I was <laughs> if it were time with you if it were practice I could do a poll here now I could ask you a few questions and you could see do you know something I picked B and actually the answer was A and that's feedback a really nice opportunity for feedback if you've got large classes so um, and then self and peer review get students sharing each other's work to, to review it, not to assess it, but to review it. And that way they're helping feedback to each other. So again, you can come, again, maybe some of the IT people might come in. in, in I know in, in Brightspace, we have particular um, things that do self and peer. Uh, you may well have um, in Blackboard some opportunities to do some um, peer and self, but they're 
absolutely formative assessment and feedback. So they're very legitimate. And um, so, you know, um, but you may not see them as feedback, but in, certainly in the context, in, in our national context, these, these are considered feedback. Maybe put in the, um, any questions around feedback or anything that people are, or any queries um, that they have around giving feedback or students self and peer, any, any insights or anybody doing anything, stick it up there in the chat. Pause for a minute. Um, any any questions or anybody just stop me talking for a minute. <laughs> anybody, any particular question would like to take the mic or put it up there in the chat? Just pause for a minute. You're very quiet there in Portugal. <laughs> Might be all typing at the same time. So Blackboard Ultra allows to provide feedback and tests. Great, thank you for that, Sylvia. Yeah. So the tests, yeah, great. Feedback is very hard, Elsa. Yeah, in large classes, yeah, it is. So you might find, Elsa, that uh, some of the ones like polling, some of the ones like group feedback, ones that you could automate it feedback, yeah. To us, they would be very legitimate. I'd, again, you're, you may have different regulations around this, but certainly they are, they are forms of feedback that we would see. Yeah. So thank you for that, Elsa. Yeah, so large classes, uh, what we've been saying in UCD is to be, to be careful with your time. If you have time to give feedback to a lot of students, great. If you don't have time, then you may need to do group feedback. You may need to do polling, get students to self and peer review stuff. And that's a legitimate way of feedback as well. So rather than using nothing, uh, try and use those, those alternatives. Blackboard is of feedback and it works fine. Great. Thank you for that, uh, Joan. Oral or written feedback. Um, thank you for that question, Diana. The oral, do you know oral feedback? Students really like oral feedback um, because you, they hear your tone of voice. And, and in fact, it doesn't have to be too long, but they, they can hear you say, Diana, this is, you know, you did well on this. And students really like oral feedback. They're more likely to listen to oral, if you can do it easily, um, um, than, than written. Is there, a recommendation, is there a recommendation combination for the three forms of assessment from previous slide? What about the work of faculty to do them all? The, the, the three forms, of assessment for learning the, yeah, as the um, learning. oh i see sorry no uh, yeah well the the sorry i see what you're saying so you're talking about the though okay well you probably have to do of because it's graded so it's usually it's 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 one that you're doing it's graded you don't have to do both of these as and for you only have to do something from these so these as and for relate to the ucd to this list so you don't have to do all of that you might choose one um, in ucd we we technically say you have to get feedback has to be at least one of those so you don't have to do them all uh, i know its circumstances are a bit tough at the moment because um, you, you can't plan very well, but certainly um, I would suggest that whatever you can do in this time, if you can do one of those, that, that would be, it's not all of those. No, no. Pick one. And again, let me know, Manuel, if that, you don't agree with that or if there's anything in your regulations, but um, certainly from the definition of feedback in Ireland, any of these are feedback um, and any one would, would be good in what you can do. So um, I'm going to move on to academic integrity as we just move on along, because I know this is a concern. Um, sorry, Maria, could you explain the strategy regarding lab work? Yeah, the, the lab work was that if they, whatever they can do in the lab this year, let them do. So can they do a lab report? Can they do a... Um, simulation is there something you can do in this time and if there's an absolute laboratory piece that is not that they can't do at home there's chemicals involved can this be deferred for another semester obviously these would have to go through your school and have to be talked to just head of school these are all very institutional decisions but it's that thinking through what can they do this time and what could be put off um, 
Would you consider replacing summative? I'd love to completely replace summative assessment formative, but students may not progress to the institution. It's kind of a necessary evil. But if you can replace some summative with formative, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, to reduce it. Um, Gabrielle, thinking about more people in the class team to feedback, are you acting with online tutor? How are they training to get online? Um, there's a lot of stuff about training, yes. I mean, you can only do what you can do in the time if, this, if, if you need training as an online tutor. I know there's a lot of people who haven't used um, Blackboard before. I'll, I'll leave that one if you don't mind to put it, that's around training and, and availability of, of a training. I want to move on to the last 10 minutes around the academic integrity because I know a lot of you are worried about this. Um, there's a couple of ways to think about this. We're using the term, and I think the term um, academic integrity is being used more internationally now. And why it's being used is it's trying to focus on the positive behaviors of students rather than the negative behaviors. And if the students there listening, I'm sure they might appreciate this because sometimes there's a lot of bad press about students in this space, unfairly. Uh, not all students cheat. <laughs> so I think there's a bit of a move to talk about it as academic integrity. You know what? Is their academic integrity and, and look at the positive on the house in this area. So and there's some nice resources by the UK's QQA and we've put together a recent resource there and you'll get these slides afterwards with all the links um, I, I know I'm happy to share so you get the links to the slides as well. Um, but let me go through a couple of ways to think about it. Um, the first step, I would say, is to start with promoting students' academic integrity, to start on a positive note. So how can we work with students to educate them on what we mean by this, um, going back to what's, how transparent we are in what we are expecting of them, what they can use, what they can't use, do they understand what plagiarism is, is there any resources that you can work with students? Um, so really pushing the student's role in this piece. We have moved on to also doing what we've called as an, an honesty code or an honesty statement. And again, this pushes the idea that students have to sign up. It won't completely stop it, but it's, it's trying to give a cultural change here that students have to sign up to say, yes, I have been honest. Yes, I haven't plagiarism. Yes, the work is on my own, um, that I have, I have, I have done this piece of work in, in an honest way. Um, and we've created what we've called an honesty code and statement. And there's three examples there of how we've actually instituted, we have across the institution have made every assignment, we hope <laughs> that there is an honesty statement of code used with it. And if you're using Blackboard, there's a checklist functionality in Brightspace and hopefully in Blackboard that the students have to tick this before they hand it in. Or in the online quiz, it could be the first mandatory question or in a text-based assignment, it could be that they copy and paste it into it. So, and this starts a process with the students that it, it's, it's actually, um, you, you, it, the role is you are, we are relying on you to be, to be academically honest. So that's your first step. The second step is the nature of the task. You need to design it to try and prevent it. So first of all, you might frame assessments so that students are required to justify their arguments. So it is their argument, unique to them, um, including a critique of their choice of supporting evidence. So they have to say why they chose that evidence. Encourage originality, self-reflection, and individual responses where possible. Um, asking the students it where possible to relate the topic data to their own experience. So it's unique, again, to them. Where you can give some choice of topics in the assignment, and again, that allows students, then not all students are doing the same topic. Detect for con contract cheating through your, your um, plagiarism tools, or through um, even just checking. There are some ideas out there how you might recognize something that's like your essay mills, as we would call it. So that's the nature of the task. That's kind of the step two. And finally, it's trying to really stop it happening. So you're working down from students to the design of the piece down to kind of preventing it. And the first one is, um, if you're using quiz banks, um, shuffle or randomize questions. So it's harder for students to, to detect. The, these, this last step here is probably in this time constraint exam context. 
limit the time that a student can complete the online assessment to something that's reasonable yet prevents them looking up answers. So there's something about the time being enough to do the, the, the exam, but not too much that they have time to be helping others. So there's something about the time uh, of the exam. Be careful though, because students with disabilities and students with um, special needs or accommodations need more time. So you do have to be careful that you're not squeezing out that group. Um, so it's a balance with the time. Um, I've obviously proctoring, I, I, I've, I've mentioned the top one there. Use proctoring if you have it. And I know, I think there is something under foot in your institution, this is the medical school using proctoring. Proctoring is, is uh, where the, 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 there's a software that can check that it's the students who are sitting in front of you basically, it's probably the best way. Um, thank you, somebody's put the Portuguese on it. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, and if people are using proctoring, maybe say, but I think the medical school are using proctoring, so you might learn from, from each other on that one. The other one used some open-ended questions. Another nice idea that I heard people talking about, if you're using MCQs, multiple choice questions, um, you can actually put, and maybe an open-ended question every now and then saying, why did you choose the answers that you just chose? So if they've chosen A, B, D, and, you're, and then maybe, one of the questions says, well, why did you choose that? So that you add in a few of those open-ended ones and they can really make students justify their answers. Um, the last one there is give clear instructions on exam arrangements. What is permitted, not permitted in terms of access to resources. Be very clear because there's these different types, be very clear to, and they might be doing in one of your courses, they might be doing it one way and another course they do it another way. So it's really clear, do they know what they can access? And can they, for example, some people feel collaborating with other students is a good thing and they allow it because they want students to talk. And another person might decide, don't want them to collaborate and we don't want because that would be cheating. So you need to be very clear what the students need to do. Uh, let me just pause for a second to see is there a question here. Um, one issue with the question in Nalanta is, is we allow students to go back to the questions. Students don't like this. It's a way of reducing cheating. Okay. Yeah, students don't like it, but it's a way of reducing. Well, thank you for that, Florinda. Yes, that's another way of doing it. If they can't go back, uh, they can't, uh, yeah, I suppose there's an the up, upside and a downside to it. Um, but yeah, that's probably a good idea that maybe they can't go back. So they've done it, they've done it but um, I suppose people can make mistakes too. I suppose that's the downside, but it is a way of reducing possibly, possibly cheating. Any, any questions on, on that academic integrity or doesn't allow that mode? Doesn't not Anna? Okay, thank you for that. Okay. Yeah, they can't go back. It doesn't allow. Okay, I'd, I'd take your advice on that. Any other questions on the academic integrity? I have or... one. Yeah, Hi. who's that? Equipa, is it? Uh, no, yeah. This is Rui. So my question is this. Okay. Uh, when, when talking about programming tasks, for instance, most answers are on the web. So if I choose, for instance, how do I do this or that, I'll find yeah. a piece of code on the web that does that. Right. I think it happens for maths, mathematics, for instance, physics and other stuff. Yeah. So when you do an, an online exam, it is very hard to know if people are answering your question yeah. or if they are just copying it from Google. Yeah. yeah. Could I ask you, could you follow through with a question that says, why did you choose it? Or is there a, could you have a follow on question? Well, Would that work? Would that work? Because they they submit a program which is probably uh, quite long. Yeah. So they take a lot of time uh, commenting the yeah. program to say this one does this or that because of this or that. And yeah. It's yeah. Very hard to uh, uh, know if they took the answer from a forum, for instance, or if they thought about yeah. It themselves. Yeah. 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 I know it's a very difficult one. I, I and. Can can you use proctoring? Is that something that maybe you could do so you can? I think it's hard because yeah. using something like, like that means that you have to rely on the connection quality of the students. 
and most of yeah. my students have a very low bandwidth or stuff like that. For instance, okay. and I have problems most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a very difficult one because the programming is like maths. I think maybe you might talk to some, I could put you in contact with, we have a very good maths department here. I might put you in contact with, there's a girl called Maria Meehan in our, um, if you would um, put your email, to, if you would send your email to me, um, maybe to, to Manuel there and, and pass it on to me. I'll, I'll ask, I'll check what maths are doing in UCD because they're, they've been quite on top of this sort of stuff. So I might come back with a more disciplined answer to that. Would that be okay? Sure, fine. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's very discipline specific and it's it's a, a challenging one. So I'll 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 follow up on that question and come back. Yeah, yeah. Can um, I take the opportunity. Sure, just, yeah, Manuel. Yeah. yeah. Just to remind everyone that the university has an open uh, had one the first round of an open call to actually allow students to get better conditions in their internet and we are providing some solutions from that and there will be a second call and this is widely announced so if there are students who really have difficulties with the internet there's solutions that the, they can obtain from the university great thank thank you for that manuel thank you um i'm, I'm struggling with the, the pronunciation of margo is it Mar margo uh, forcing the students to answer a development question a possible way to reduce avoiding cheating so answer a developmental question it I, I if i'm understanding you if your questions are more around application or development if it's if there isn't a simple answer it's a better type of question because the students can answer it in different ways and i think that's that's why there is something about designing your questions carefully that you're asking students to answer more individually if if possible it's obviously difficult in programming um as as uh, it was just been talked about there but if the question can allow different ways of answering you will be reducing the chance of cheating yeah a question for the it staff yeah can you trace the IP of the students? Anyone can control remotely, yeah. Wouldn't the excessive resources for integral reduce the learning aspect of the evaluation? You see, it's interesting if the excessive resources, yeah, I think there's two sides to this integrity. There's, in some ways, there's an opportunity for you to actually improve your assessments and improve the learning if you give some thought to deeper questions and more unique questions. So in some ways, there's a good side of this if you have an opportunity. I think what makes it harder is the context where they're very factually based or from the kind of context that we're just talking about there that is making it very difficult. Is it a worse learning experience? I don't know, but it's um, it might be a more stressful learning experience because students are... Um, are not in the time constrained exam hall and they're in, in, online. So it's probably more stressful, I might think. Um, particularly if, they, if they're new to it and they don't understand it. So it, there is a balance between, I suppose, the stress side of this. Um, so I know we're coming towards the end. Um, one of the things that we did in UCD, and it might be something that you might like to, to do either at institutional or school level, we started gathering a lot of these questions and started to put a frequent FAQs, frequently asked questions by staff and frequently asked questions by students. And we started to collate them and share them back. And it was very, and these, these are some of ours and some of our answers and I won't go through them all, but you can, you can look at the link. Um, and I think this was useful because we're all trying to get on top of it together <laughs> and we're all learning. <laughs> it's new for everybody. Uh, we're all getting online very quickly. So we don't all have the answers, but actually as a collective, we might have the answers. So that might be something that you might think about, um, both in relation to maybe school or maybe the institution, whatever manageable. I'm not trying to give work to anybody, but actually it gave, it was very useful because staff and students could both go to one place and ask, that kind of question, what do I do in program, programming software with, within this sort of context? And your, your, both your IT or yourselves can try and answer some of these questions. So a bit of crowdsourcing, a bit of collective wisdom um, is, is very useful in, in, this, um, in this situation. Um, and just, I suppose, finally, because it's just coming to the end, 
I know you can't read these very well. It doesn't really matter because the links are at the bottom there. There are some resources on our website that we've put together, especially for um, both teaching online alternatives and academic integrity. Um, and the national forum, the one, the, the one on the right here, this is actually, um, they have collated, as I was saying, a lot of the resources across the country and put it all in the one space. So you may find some useful resources there. So there are resources out there. We certainly in UC don't have the answers to everything yet. Uh, we're learning as we go along. Um, so um, uh, just a minute or two left. So I don't know, Manuel, do you want to say anything else? Or is there any last questions or any last comments? No, I, I would leave. Yes, we are, we are really uh, approaching the, the end of the, of the webinar. But I don't want to take the two minutes that maybe there's a really burning question that someone has, the last yeah. one. Yeah. And afterwards, we, need to, we re really need to be aware of the time and, and, and finish. But is there any last question? Maybe on the mic so that it will be quicker? No? Not really? Okay, three, two, one. May I? Okay, yeah, okay, there you go. Hi, I'm Joanna. I, I still have a question. It, it, it regards the, how can we be sure that the person uh, uh, giving the answer to the exam online is actually the student? We can control uh, uh, computers by uh, someone posted here, Team Viewer and other softwares. And how do we know it's the student that's doing the exam and not someone else doing it by him? I think that there's two answers to that. You can go very into the proctoring software and, and that actually, um, you know, uh, shows the student doing it. It's, and the, 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 I won't get into all the technical side of it, but that's, that is the safest space. Mm -hmm. But I suppose it goes back to the point and, and it's interesting, in UCD, we decided we didn't have time to get on top of the proctoring software because it's a learning curve for staff, it's a learning curve for students. So we just, we are really pushing, I suppose, the other side of it, which is can you adjust your questions to make sure that the students answer them uniquely? They're the two sides of, of, the, of the answer. And it's probably somewhere in the middle, or, or it may depend on your subject and it may depend on the type of assessment, but it's somewhere between Proctoring, which is, you know, expensive software, takes time to upscale and will ID the students and will show them and, and it's probably as safe as it can be to, if you can't do that, what about down at the other end, which is, you know, is there ways, as I was saying, to make sure that the assignment is worded in a way that actually is more, you creates more unique answers. That's, that's, that's the two sides of the two ends of the scale uh, that's as best we can do sorry it's not perfect Thank you. I don't know if I, I know Joanna that may not is it Joanna yes. yeah I know that may not answer it perfectly for you but if you're really concerned and you're really you're it's high stakes and it's you know assessment you might need to look at the proctoring as the only option but it's we we haven't been able to do it because we haven't had the time to upskill people to do it across the big institution um, where staff are already doing it. We said great, but if they weren't, then um, that we, we haven't been doing it. So I think that's they're your options, and they're very different options, and they're not perfect. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your question, Joanna. So Geraldine and everyone. Uh, the time really went away, uh, virtually no, uh, but it really went, flew really fast. So Geraldine, it was a wonderful opportunity to hear from you. Uh, thank you for a clear uh, talk. It really helped a lot in to uh, help us organize some ideas, some possibilities. You offered some very clear alternatives. Some of them, people who are in this webinar might be interested in using, some yeah. not, that is fine. But we now, we now have maybe, I hope some of you or most of you now have, know about something else you can do, which is actually why it's good to share. And it's actually why we, help, we are uh, having webinars and other resources and other initiatives like uh, Idea Uminu is actually organizing. So Geraldine, I don't, I don't know if you would like to say just- uh, Yeah, words, I just say, you know? I, I, what I would say is, um, you can only do your best in the situation. I think it's one of the things we were saying in UCD is 
you know, th this is a very unusual time. It's a very stressful time. And, and uh, between the students and the staff, even own ho home circumstances are, 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 could be stressful. So we have been saying in, in UCD, just do your best. Um, do you know, it's at the end of the day, it's learning and you have to get through it. But just to do your best and, you know, um, it's not ideal. It's not ideal, but, you know, do your best for yourselves and your students. And I think we've kind of come to that a bit in UCD as well, is that that's what we can do. We, we'll try and stand over it, try and be reliable, as valid as possible, but it's as reliable and as valid as, as possible in the context. Uh, we learn a lot more next semester. We'll all be much better at this. <laughs> but for the moment, you know, don't, don't beat yourselves up, as we would say. Just, just try and try and do your best. And I wish you well, and, and good luck with it as well. Good, good luck. And with I'm just, and, and I'm just yeah. wondering that once we get over this first exam period, uh, maybe it would be a nice idea to get back and meet again. Yeah, and that would be maybe, lovely. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there's still no conditions to do it in person, unfortunately. Yes. I'm sure we'll do it sometime. Yeah. But maybe it will be good actually to talk about how it went exactly. and what went really well and what didn't go. Exactly. So it's yeah. the spirit that I really that I really appreciate in all these colleagues that we, who are with us tonight at six thirty p.m. We'll be having another partilando ideas and in our informal chat about these issues. Today's topic is summative assessment. So please show up. Uh, we we have now more ideas to uh, discuss. Thanks to you, Geraldine. And uh, well, I cannot thank you uh, enough. Thanks to the forum. Please say that to Terry from me. And I uh, hope to see you again sometime. Yeah, great. And, and, and I'll get over in, in person as well sometime. It'll be lovely. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Take care and take good care. luck, everybody. Obrigado yeah, good luck, with, good luck with your... Take care.